Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me in the ocean for another Collaborative Warfare Extra video. And yes, this is another boat, because I've been kind of pushing for a bit of a navy, because I think it could be quite useful. And this is actually an attack boat. Nothing really lands on here, unless it was very tiny, you can, could somehow like how land here. But this is mainly just covered in weapons, mostly for defending itself and other boats, because I kind of see it in a corvette or frigate type role, although... Um, it weighs like 50 tons, so <laughs> very light canoe maybe would be more apt. But yeah, this is another boat I've been working on. It's much smaller, much more compact, much lighter. Um, but it is another hover boat because I like that idea. It just means you can go faster and don't have to spam it with these, like, you know, like, because usually in Caspi to make a boat, a boat float, you um, use air intakes, but you have to use a bunch, and that would just increase lag and make it very hard for people to do stuff, and it wouldn't be that fun. But yeah, this is made for attacking. Um, well, both uh, your normal targets and land, and it can attack land targets. It's that's why it carries cruise missiles, and I do have a demonstration for that in a second. But yeah, I'm just going to talk through it. It's very similar to the other boat. Obviously, it's smaller and stuff. But at the front, we've got ourselves a flat cannon for taking out well, mostly heavier bombers, but also uh, other planes. The flat cannon is hugely effective. Um, at taking out aircraft, and we've obviously got our 30 millimeter, 30 millimeter goalkeeper turret, the staple of my defense fleet. Um, for shooting down missiles and planes alike, and then a bunch of sidewind, um, sidewinders. Quite a few sidewinders. I haven't gone too crazy, and I think I might need a few more, but because um, the thing with the base turret is you can just like pull it back in and reload it, but when this is out on the ocean, I can't like reload this unless I take it to a port, or I can refuel it if I bring a helicopter in or another boat or something. But yeah, this is just well, made to withstand a lot of things. So it's got a bunch of missiles. Um, its control systems are fairly similar to the other boat. It has these uh, wing things at the back, and it has a bunch of reaction control systems. The other boat did. I don't think I actually mentioned them, but they did indeed have um, a reaction control system to hold it steady. I'm not sure why it's spanning. I'm not sure if this one will either. But yeah, this is actually um, an attack boat, and that's the coolest thing. I'm going to demonstrate that right now. So I've got a target 33 kilometers downrange. Um, I'm hoping... <laughs> I'm hoping this will work, because sometimes it doesn't. Um, okay, so cruise altitude, we'll put it for like 500 meters, and we'll fire! Go! Good, it didn't blow up my boat. Step one, complete. And these cruise missiles are really cool. I couldn't get them to work for a while to just do long-range cruising, but they actually are very effective. Um, these ones have boosters, which means they can launch not from a plane, because there's two, type of, two types of cruise missiles in BD Armory. There's the standard, just like... Normal cruise missiles um, that you have to fire from a plane, so they already have a bunch of speed, and that's kind of their boost launch velocity. And then they can cruise with these like high efficiency jet type engines, and they fly aerodynamically and are good at bombing things. But obviously, that's not a plane, and it can travel reasonably fast. But um, I've, uh, but obviously not enough to you launch a missile and these launch vertically. So it does have the boosters, but these are relatively effective. I have to say, the explosions not quite as. Um, great as I thought, and I only carry four right now. This is more of a prototype. Usually all of these things I show you in these videos are prototypes just because they take a lot of work and I get very excited and I'm like, look what I did! And then I work on them loads. Uh, like the carrier, in fact, I've upped the thrust. It now travels incredibly fast. Um, I've semi-solved the spinning issue. Actually, I think it was a comment that helped me solve that. That's another reason I do it, because often I have problems like the spinning thing and people are like, oh, just do this. And I'm like, okay. Um, so I actually fixed that by putting a probe up front so it's facing forward so the reaction control systems work more with it. I've forgotten who told me that, but thank you for that. You are helping the Territorial Arctic Protection Entente win the war against the evil Velux Empire. Oh, I'm the bad guy, aren't I? <laughs> Well, uh, if you believe what some people are saying, I am indeed the bad guy. Although this doesn't look much like a V1. I might use a might use a V1, just really go into my uh, stereotype at this point. Anyway, we are approaching our target, and you see it starts doing these aerodynamic turns, mostly to get aim, and partly, I hope, to um, dodge... Uh, dodge any oncoming gunfire. This doesn't have a gun on it. It actually has a cruise missile because I was testing cruise missiles. Um, so that's why it's called CM test, as in cruise missile test. And here we go. We're actually about to hit. And nice, we hit it. Um, <laughs> super ineffective. Um, but I'm hoping to fix that. It knocked the missile off, though, and knocked a bit off the top. It did do some destruction. I mean, I probably should have showed you it prior. But yeah, disarmed it. That's obviously what I was going for. Um, but yeah, that is uh, mostly how that works. Now let's switch back to the light attack boat. So yeah, it can attack ground targets. Because obviously the carrier is more taking a bunch of um, planes and helicopters and things. Uh, places. One second. There we go, that'll hopefully synchronize it. Um, I can sync my audio off that. But anyway, yeah, the uh, carrier is obviously for taking a lot of um, 
planes and uh, things to attack uh, to attack the ground. But this would be. I actually see this as a bit of an. I'm gonna close my window. Sorry, it's very windy. I see this as a bit of a, um, like a. Uh, what, what am I thinking of? Like an accompaniment, like a protection, like a fucking. It, but it, it will basically be near the um, carrier because the carrier carrier isn't superly heavily armed because most of its space is reserved for landing planes. But this has these, well, this big missile pod with a bunch of missiles in it. So it can attack everything and protect the boat. Um, escort, that's the word I was thinking of. So yeah, it can be in a protection role, and then when it gets to land, it can lay down the preliminary fire with cruise missiles, so it'll uh, disable the turrets for the planes to go in and have less of a hard time. So I'm thinking very tactically. I think this kind of thing will be quite hard to implement because it is not that fast. I will show you it flying right now. Um, I'm not sure how well it will do without because it's slightly un in balance, but I'm going to have to get used to that. Um, so yeah, let's ramp up these hover pads. These are indeed the hover pads, hover pads from uh, Kerbal Foundries. Um, these aren't actually scaled up because this is a very small boat. I wanted it to be small because that makes it easier and um, less parts. It's uh, under, I think it might even be under 200 parts. Yeah, 197 without that missile I just fired off. 198 in total. I might add a few more things. Um, but yeah, these um, these uh, guns also have a great deal of uh, uh, armament. There's uh, the, the flat cannon still fires 30 millimeter rounds, but there's a lot of 30 millimeter rounds in this. I'm trying to arm these quite heavily because they're going to be away for a long time. And this doesn't have much fuel in it yet. I haven't actually added its transport fuel, but. Um, but I will at some point, because it's going to need a lot of fuel to go long distances, because if you think about um, my sea base right now, if I can... There we go. My sea base is up here, which is quite far from anything. Say I wanted to attack, oh, I don't know, this uh, Yabnamarak. Yeah, y Yabnamarak. That's quite a long distance. I could probably cruise down there. I, I think the carrier has a range for that, and it would take quite a while, but I could probably do it in a reasonable amount of time, because these do travel quite fast. Um, which is the constraint of KSP boats, is obviously you don't want to be sitting there for like 10 hours. But yeah, anyway, let's go. Um, these are actually, these actually pull the boat forward. Um, they're much better, I was going to use the ones I used for the carrier, but they're massive. But these, um, they're not super efficient, but they have a lot of thrust. And they pull the boat forward from the back, which is surprisingly stable. I, 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 it's kind of, they work very similarly to normal jet engines, so that's why it's not as unstable as that would be in real life. But yeah, you can see I'm getting up some speed. I'm probably going to maroon myself on that island. But yeah, I'm getting some speed up. 60 meters a second, that's about 150 miles an hour, to put it in perspective. Very fast boat. If you had a boat that could do this in real life, it would be a pretty serious... Um, well, if you could get a boat that could fly, that would be a pretty serious tactical unit. But yeah, I think the um, addition of these hover pads are just really, really good ideas, because uh, I think this sort of stuff would be very hard without it. I have built boats in the past that travel quite fast um, and float. But they are there are a lot of parts and it's quite a hassle. But you can imagine if I'm traveling, I this goes about 70 meters a second right now. I'd like to get it up to maybe 90, um, which is I think what my carrier does. Maybe even 100 at this point, 100 meters a second, which is what like 250 miles an hour, um, and that's quite fast. That is very fast for a boat. Very fast for anything. I mean, it's much slower than obviously my hypersonic planes fly. But if I time warp, that's going to be what like um, like. Like 400 meters a second, I can live with traveling around at that sort of speed. I mean, you can see I'm making. Well, if I focus on the thing, uh, I'm already making decent ground, and it's not been very long. I'm just scooting along. So yeah, I I think I'm committed enough to uh, victory that I can stomach long uh, long distances. Although I might be preparing for university quite soon. I'm getting my results tomorrow. Oh my god, I think I'm gonna die. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's always on my mind. Anyway. Yeah, I think I can, you know, stomach this sort of thing. And I guess we'll just... I wonder how well it does at time accelerate. I haven't actually tried moving it at time accelerate yet. It gets closer to the water, worryingly. And bends. It's quite bendy. That's a, um, a feature. It makes it more safe from um, things. What am I heading towards? I think I'm heading towards that. See, it's making pretty good ground. I mean, annoyingly, it does slow down slightly at these speeds. Uh, at the time accelerate, so it does make it slightly less efficient, but I think I go for slight less efficiency over my sanity. Because obviously I can't, I don't want to be spending hours. I mean, I could probably stomach like a couple of hours just like sailing down. I could just leave it on and play like fast and light or something. Um, or just do something else. But yeah, I think this is actually feasible now. So I think my naval fleet may become a real thing that we should fund to crush our enemies and then crash us into the ocean. Uh, into the ocean? No, into these cliffs. That's pretty good distance covered. 
that's pretty quick. I mean, I'm only going three times time accelerate, so, uh... Okay, how close am I actually... Oh yeah, here we go. There we go. Let's hit these cliffs. Although it is a hoverboat, will it just go right up it? Maybe. Um, I wouldn't really trust this on land. As I've said, these can go on land because, um... Well, because they hover. But I probably wouldn't trust it, and putting it down is quite temperamental. Although I did fly it over here from the runway. Uh, okay. Okay. How's this gonna go? Are we good? Are we good? We're good. We lost an engine, but we're good. That's surprisingly effective! This is now my land boat. Although it's getting uh, your motion going. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no. Uh, oh, no. Uh, shut down engine. So, yeah, if I need to, I can go over land. It's a land boat. It's an everything boat. Um, okay, come on. Up the hill. Up the hill. Up the hill. <laughs> this is awesome. Anyway, I'll let this just continue to be awesome. Anyway, I'll slow down now and um, get this guy out. Just uh, take a stroll around your boat. Or just pass out. He's drunk. He's a sailor. Um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you're looking forward to seeing this in my fleet of death and destruction. I will see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,